This is going to be another question and answer, and we're going to talk about a question about finding God's will. How can you find God's will? Many times a person focuses a lot on finding God's will for their life. For example, should they pastor? Should they be a missionary? Should they be a pastor's wife? I believe every Christian every day should focus on doing what he knows to do. That is right. And if he focuses on what he presently knows God wants him to do, then God will open all the doors for him that he wants open for him. In James 4, 17, it says, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is a sin. Do everything that you know that is good to do, that you know that you're supposed to do. Right now, focus on everything you know that you should be doing. Then God will open the doors for you that he once opened. I believe that God talks to us through his book. I don't believe that God will come to you in an audible voice and say, Go do this or go do that. What he does tell you is he tells you through his word what to do with your life. So let's look at some of those things. Number one, what's God's will for you? It's get to work. Maybe you aren't sure where the Lord is going to lead you, but we already know he's called us to work. Ephesians 6, 5 through 9 says, Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, and singleness of your heart as unto Christ, not with thy service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. And ye masters, do the same things unto them for bearing threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven, neither is their respective persons with him. I believe if you are a Christian man, then you should be working with your hands. You should have a job. You should be providing for yourself and family if you have one. This is the will of God for you to work with your hands and be a Christian example in front of your supervisor. Lead him the right way through a Christian example, being honest, being on time, working hard, working harder than the lost men. He's going to notice something different about you. This is the will of God to work with your hands to do good works as a Christian. The next thing is to live a sanctified life. 1 Thessalonians 4, 3, For this is the will of God. This is the will of God. Even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. If the will of God for you is to live as clean and holy as you possibly can after you get saved, then that's something you should focus on right now. You may not know what God really is going to have you do with your life. But you know he wants you to live a sanctified life. It is the will of God that you submit yourself to the laws of the land as long as they don't contradict God's laws. Just such as in the case of Daniel where it became against the law for him to pray to his God. In 1 Peter 2, 13 and 15, Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God, that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. For so is the will of God. God wants you to live a sanctified life. He wants you to, you know, obey the laws of the land as long as they don't go against God's laws. You need to have a good report of people among people that are lost. They shouldn't be able to find any uncleanness in you. It is the will of God for you to suffer for well-doing. In 1 Peter 3.17, For it is better if the will of God be so that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. 1 Peter 4.1 and 4.2, For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of God. It's the will of God that you live a sanctified life. This is the will of God for you to go to work and to live a sanctified life. If you don't know what else to do, then you need, you know you need to do at least these two things. When it comes to determining if it is the will of God for you to preach or be a teacher or missionary, look at the preachers in the Bible. What are some of the things that we can see that they had? The person who sent this email, you know, they asked, how do I know if God wants me to be a, be a preacher or a teacher? Let's look at the preachers in the Bible. 
Jeremiah, for example, in Jeremiah 20 and verse 9. It says, Then I said I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in mine heart as a burning fire, shut up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. Does the word of God burn within you? Is there something about the word of God that you love more than anything else and want to talk about it and proclaim it everywhere you go? That's a good sign that the Lord's dealing with you about being a preacher or a teacher. For example, Isaiah, in Isaiah 6, 8, it says, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Isaiah was willing to be sent. Do you have the word of God burning in your heart? And are you willing to be sent? I think if you're willing to be sent and you have the word of God burning in your heart, God is wanting you to do something. I believe every Christian is called to preach the gospel. That is, give the gospel to everyone you come in contact with and take a stand for the words. I don't believe that there are just certain chosen people to preach the gospel because every born-again believer has a responsibility of giving out the gospel to every person they come in contact with. Now, when it comes to being a pastor, this is something a little bit different because, you, because it's not for everybody. You have a desire in you to do this according to Paul and you also meet certain have to meet these certain qualifications that he gives in 1 Timothy 3 1 through 7 and something about being a pastor is he needs to be apt to teach as it said this means he has spent some time in the words of God apt to teach in 2 Timothy 2 24 it says and the servant of the Lord must not strive but be gentle unto all men apt to teach Paul knows a pastor needs to be studied up and able to teach people. So he tells Timothy in 1 Timothy 4.13, Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Isaiah 34.16 says, Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. So the will of the Lord, we know, is for you to work. It's to live as holy as possible. It's the will of the Lord for every Christian to preach the gospel, give out the gospel to every person. And if you continue to do these things, then the Lord will just keep opening doors for you. In Colossians 4, 3, it says, With all praying also for us, that God will open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds. I've found the more I do for the Lord, the more doors that come open for me. God is looking for people to do something little. What I'm doing on here is something very little. I've been doing this for 10 years now, and no one even knows who I am. Uh, you may do something for 20, 30, 40 years and never get any recognition for it whatsoever. Luke 16, 10 says, He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. The young guy who sent this email would like to do something for the Lord. He could start out just putting the gospel out any way he can. He lives in a place where there is not much Bible-believing preaching and leadership so he doesn't really have anyone who can mentor him. So he can continue listening to Bible believers on the internet. He, he mentioned he already listens to Robert Breaker. So what this young man could do is continue to learn from men like Robert Breaker. Uh, people like that. Bible believers. That way he can be able to teach others also. As it says in 2 Timothy 2, 1 and 2. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. With this young, I believe that this young guy is called to be into the ministry because, you know, he's got a desire. He's got the word of God burning in his heart. You know, he, he wants to do something for the Lord. He's saying, Lord, here am I, send me. And I believe if you've got those things, the Lord wants you to be in the ministry so he can learn from these faithful Bible believers like Robert Breaker and others that are on the Internet who, whom he listens to, and then he could get into the ministry. He doesn't have someone who could lead him and mentor him in person. And you have to realize that not everybody has someone to lead them and mentor them. So that's why the Lord could use the Internet in this way. He could learn from these men. That way he can be able to teach others also. So I hope that answers his question. 
the best answer I've got for this is, if you're looking for the will of God, do what you already know to be right. Do everything in the Bible that you know to be right. And while you're doing that, God's going to open the doors for you. And you'll be, you'll end up where God wants you to be if you just keep doing right. 